When are we going to stop redefining the meaning of important titles? An astronaut, a scientist, an explorer. These roles have traditionally demanded years of training, immense skill, and extraordinary courage. Yet lately, it seems that these hard-earned titles are being handed out more for publicity than for actual achievement. In 1963, Soviet cosmonaut Valentina Tereshkova carved her name into history as the first woman to venture into space. Spending an astonishing 70 hours orbiting the Earth, her mission wasn't just a personal triumph. It symbolized a giant leap for women in science and exploration, achieved through years of preparation and real, grueling risk. Fast forward six decades, and we meet NASA astronaut Sunita Williams, a veteran of multiple space missions and one of the most accomplished astronauts in history. In 2024, she boarded Boeing's troubled Starliner capsule for what was intended to be a straightforward, relatively short mission to the International Space Station. But nothing about the mission went according to plan. Once in orbit, a series of technical malfunctions were discovered. Multiple thrusters on the Starliner capsule failed, helium leaks compromised the propulsion system, and the spacecraft's return had to be delayed indefinitely until Boeing and NASA could verify that it could bring Williams and her fellow astronaut Butch Wilmore back safely. For nine long months, Williams and Wilmore remained stranded on the ISS, far beyond their expected mission length. Every day they waited was another day facing potential disaster. If the Starliner failed during re-entry, there was a real risk they could be seriously injured or worse. Astronauts train endlessly for emergencies, but no amount of preparation can eliminate the dangers of an untested or compromised spacecraft. The mission could have ended in tragedy if Boeing's engineering teams hadn't worked tirelessly to remotely diagnose and mitigate the risks. Compare that harrowing ordeal to Blue Origin's NS-31 mission. Celebrated as the first all-female crew since Tereshkova, the flight quickly grabbed headlines and was hailed by media outlets as a historic milestone for women in spaceflight. But digging deeper, questions naturally arise. Is the comparison even remotely fair? The reality is that the NS-31 mission was a suborbital joyride that lasted barely 11 minutes. The participants, which included celebrities like Katy Perry and Lauren Sanchez, floated briefly after crossing the Karman Line, the internationally recognized boundary of space, before immediately falling back to Earth. They sang, recorded videos, expressed joy, and celebrated. Yet strangely, even the footage revealed details that aerospace experts found puzzling. For example, their hair barely floated, in stark contrast to the zero-gravity environments experienced by real astronauts like Sunita Williams on the ISS. This sparked a broader conversation. Should a short, automated ride above the atmosphere, controlled entirely from the ground, qualify someone to be called an astronaut? Are we cheapening the meaning of the word by applying it so loosely? Today, there is a clear societal push to create more opportunities and visibility for women across all industries, from tech to finance to space exploration. It's understandable and admirable. For centuries, women were systematically excluded from these fields, and building a more inclusive environment is necessary for fairness and future progress. However, there is a growing concern that in the rush to celebrate these achievements, the standards are sometimes lowered, even unintentionally. If a man and a woman achieve the exact same milestone today, it is often the woman whose accomplishment receives broader celebration, special headlines, and public admiration. Again, this stems from good intentions, to inspire other women and girls to dream bigger, to fight against lingering societal biases, and to accelerate progress toward equality. But space should be different. Space doesn't care about your gender, your fame, or your publicist. Space is an unforgiving, lethal environment where only the best-trained, most resilient humans should be entrusted with missions. It is a realm where lives depend on expertise, composure, and real accomplishment, not celebrity status or media narratives. When Blue Origin labels a handful of celebrities as astronauts after an 11-minute automated flight, 
It does a disservice not just to women who have fought hard to earn their place among the stars, but to everyone who risks their lives in the pursuit of true exploration. Calling someone an astronaut because they floated for a few minutes above the Karman line is like calling someone a doctor because they put on a white coat and visited a hospital. It's not the same. It diminishes the blood, sweat, and years of sacrifice that real astronauts endure. It's not even about who took that flight that makes the NS-31 mission questionable. It's the nature of the rocket itself, and how the flight was structured, that truly raises eyebrows. Because at the heart of it all, New Shepard wasn't a vehicle that demanded skill or real astronautical expertise from its passengers. It was a machine that did everything on its own, from launch to landing, while the people inside simply went along for the ride. The New Shepard rocket, built by Blue Origin, is a suborbital spacecraft designed primarily for space tourism. Its main goal isn't exploration, research, or advancing human presence in orbit. It's providing a safe, exciting, but ultimately passive experience of space for paying customers. The rocket operates on a fully automated flight system. From ignition to engine cutoff, ascent to descent, everything is pre-programmed and remotely monitored from mission control on the ground. The people inside the capsule don't touch a single button. They don't steer, they don't initiate key sequences, and they certainly don't have to react to any in-flight anomalies or emergencies. Imagine getting into an amusement park ride, pulling down the safety bar, and letting the ride operator press go. That's essentially the level of passenger involvement aboard New Shepard. There's no piloting, no decision-making, no engineering tasks, no real mission-critical duties. Everything that matters happens either automatically or under the control of ground teams watching from hundreds of miles away. And it's important to understand why that matters. In traditional crewed space missions, like the Apollo missions, the Space Shuttle program, or modern ISS flights aboard SpaceX's Crew Dragon, astronauts are deeply involved in every stage of the mission. Even though many spacecraft today feature powerful autopilot systems, the crew is still trained for hundreds of different failure scenarios. They are responsible for navigation, manual overrides, system checks, docking procedures, and emergency re-entry if necessary. One wrong decision or one missed alert can mean the difference between life and death. For example, during the Apollo 11 landing, Neil Armstrong had to manually pilot the lunar module to avoid boulders that could have wrecked the spacecraft. Without his intervention, the historic moon landing would have ended in disaster. Or take the space shuttle program. Every astronaut was expected to know complex checklists and emergency maneuvers inside out. Training involved thousands of hours in simulators, including handling dozens of potential failures, from stuck thrusters to landing gear malfunctions. Even the U.S. Transportation Secretary, Sean Duffy, spoke out about this. While he praised the NS-31 crew for their bravery, he made it clear that they do not meet the FAA's criteria to be officially recognized as astronauts. According to the FAA rules to earn the title of astronaut, you must perform tasks that are essential to public safety or directly contribute to the safety of human spaceflight. In the case of the NS-31 mission, the participants didn't have to do anything critical. The entire flight was automated and ground control handled everything important. When we start handing out important titles for short, automated rides, we risk disrespecting the years of training, danger, and real contributions made by true astronauts. In space, bravery alone isn't enough. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.